Hello again. So now that we understand the specification of sequence consensus, we are going to look to an algorithm that actually take us from a single value Paxos to a version of multi Paxos that work on sequences. We call it sequence Paxos. This transformation will be quite straightforward and um, you know, it will be easy to understand once you understand, of course, the single value Paxos. So let us look to multi Paxos and sequence Paxos. Okay, we are now on a roadmap. We are moving from Paxos to a multi Paxos algorithm. And what we would like to do, we would like to make the minimal modification to Paxos to obtain a correct multi Paxos algorithm. And this is what we are going to do now. Next, we would like to add optimizations to make the algorithm efficient. So let us now remember the Paxos algorithm, which was described in the previous lecture. So what are the uh, initial state variables for Paxos? We should remember that in Paxos we have processes can play multiple roles one role is the proposer, and the proposer proposes values. So we have the current proposal round, which initially it is zero, the, sometimes called the ballot number, or sometimes called the proposal number. And we remember from the algorithm that proposal number have to be unique so that it's not the case that two proposals can have the same uh, proposal number or round number. We have VC or V sub C, which we call it the proposal current value. So this is the state of a proposal. Then we have acceptors. Acceptors, we have s sets of acceptors. A majority of acceptors, that's the one that we always need for a value to be chosen and then decided. So what is the state of acceptors? Acceptors has the round number in which a value has been accepted. It has the accepted value and it has also a number which is a promise not to accept in rounds lower than this number. This is called the promise. The promise is an important concept in Paxos. Then we have the learners. The learners are the one that learn the chosen value, which we call the decided value. And initially, we call it V sub D. Initially, it is unknown. So let us look to the algorithm. So just to remember what is, what's happening, what is the... So we look to the, a proposal. So when you get a command to propose, then, then the proposer picks a unique number. It has a set that keeps track of um, the response of the acceptors. And it sends a prepare to all acceptors. So it sends a prepare. What is the acceptor does? If um, the acceptor, when it gets a prepare, it looks and see if the number it got is higher than its promise then it sets the promise to n and then it sends back to the proposer a promise not to accept any values with a proposal number less than what it has promised here and it sends the current value if any and the current proposal number in which it last accepted a value then we have the promise. So what we are having now, we get back promise. And this is a code where uh, the 
promise we get is that for our current proposal number, which is an important thing. So we get back promises and we collect promises until we get a majority of promises. And once we get a majority of promises, we select the one with the highest proposal number or round number and we get the value from that. We call this, we adopt a proposal at this point. And if the value is not empty, we adopt that value. Otherwise, we propose our own command here, C. And we send an accept to all acceptors. What happens again with acceptors? Yeah, if it doesn't, if it, it didn't promise to accept a proposal higher than this number, then it adopts the proposal, takes it, it updates its uh, round number, it updates the most recent accepted number and the value it has accepted, and it sends back an accept message to the proposal. At the proposal side, when it gets a majority of acknowledges, then it means that this value is chosen, so the value we get, the value that was proposed here is chosen. There is a majority of acceptors that accepted this value. And so this is the value to decide upon. And send the decide to all learners. And learners, if they haven't decided, they update the value to be decided and they trigger uh, a decide event. So See, at this point, as you can see, a learner just decides once. Another part of this code we haven't described here, in the case where you get a proposal number with a value less than what is promised. So, because, just to remember, NP is a promise not to accept any proposal less than that number. So in all other cases, we abort our proposal. So here we abort in the prepare phase. Here we abort in the accept phase. Here we abort at the, um, the proposal. Okay, so this is abort at the proposal. In this case, the proposal has to basically go back, pick a higher proposal number, and proposes again, or that's one possibility. The others, if he thinks he's no long, longer a leader that is eligible to propose, then he just stops proposing. Okay, so, so in full Paxos, after abort, the proposer tries to again to uh, with higher proposal number. If he thinks he's a leader, or or he, if it's not a leader-based algorithm, he just packs off and and comes back again. I'm trying to propose, but again with higher proposal number. Proposal numbers are unique. Proposal number, and that is important for safety, and should be monotonically increasingly. And one way to implement it is basically proposal number is a pair. What is this pair is? Is a Lamport time stamp and the PID, the processor ID of the proposal. Very good. So we have this algorithm, we understand this, and we go from here and try to move to multi Paxos or sequence Paxos. Now we want to accept sequences uh, and also accept multiple sequences as long as they are monotonically increasing. So let us look now to the state of our multi paxis or sequence paxis. So now values are not a single value anymore. So values are actually sequences. And initially, every acceptor, in fact, accepts the empty sequence. Then we make two changes. Remember, when, when a proposal gets a response from a majority of acceptor and accepts the one with the highest uh, round number, uh, we say 
we say that that value is adopted. So now we will do it a little bit differently. So adopting would be a little bit differently, which is basically as follows. After adopting a value with the highest proposal number, that is the normal case, the proposer is still allowed to extend the sequence with non-duplicate commands and propose that extended sequence. Okay, that is the first thing. The second thing has to do with decision. When a learner receives a decide, it will trigger a decision for that value, for when that value is a sequence. If V is a longer sequence than previously decided sequence. So as long as the decision with a longer sequence, we just trigger decide. So here is our um, Paxos algorithm. Now we just very minor modification. We change it. We are going to change it in the adopt phase and we are going to change it in the decide part. That's all. Okay. So here is our adopt. So what did we do now? Okay. We got an adopted value V. So if our command C is in this sequence, okay, so we cannot change that. It's already there. So the value we are going to send is the same as before. But if our command is not in that sequence that we got, VC, then we extend the sequence here, and then we send that sequence to the accept. Okay, that is the first change. Second change is at the learner. It does the following. If we get a sequence, we look to the length of this sequence. If this sequence is uh, longer than the previously decided sequence, then we basically update our decided sequence and we trigger uh, a decide. So this is it. This is really uh, sequence paxos or multi paxos. Not so much have changed. The only thing that have changed is that we are now sending back and forth sequences and uh, we just have a multi paxos algorithm. So, where to go from here? The first step to do is to look to the correctness of this algorithm. And the correctness of this algorithm can be modeled on the single value Paxos correctness proof. So we are going to have a unit discussing the correctness of this algorithm. The second thing is that we have, if we look carefully, we notice that this algorithm is not efficient. So the other issue is efficiency. Um, if you think about it, Again, every proposal, when you propose, when there is a proposal of a command, propose a command, it will take two rounds. It will go to a prepare round and an accept round. And also, you cannot take another proposal until you finish the prepare round. So what we have now is our proposals are not pipelined. So these are two things that we would like to optimize. The other thing that we would like to optimize is that we are actually sending sequences back and forth. If you look to the messages being sent in the prepare, in the prepare phase and the accept phase, these messages are actually, and in the decide phase, we are sending sequences back and forth. So what we would like to do is to look to this issue too. The other thing happens with a decide. The decide always carries sequences. So as a summary, what we would like to do is we would like for a proposer to skip the prepare phase if it's possible. We would like for a proposer to pipeline proposals to go directly and send accepts. 
we would like when we send commands between a proposer and an acceptor is to send only what we can say deltas of messages, new messages that not already been sent before. That is our goal. And we would like also uh, decide to produce incremental stream of new order commands. Saying it one more time, we would like to run the prepare phase once and after that we only run accept phase as much as possible. In fact, it will be until aborted. And from now on, we just run the accept phase. We would like to avoid sequences being sent. The next unit will be about looking at the correctness of the algorithm. After that, we are going to have a number of units looking how we implement the optimization that we just described. Thank you.